I'm Steve Harvey from the School of Biology at Georgia Tech. Uh, I'm a computational structural biologist. So my research group uses a variety of computational methods to study structure function relationships in macromolecules. We collaborate with both theoreticians and experimentalists as well in all of this. Now, many of you will be familiar with what a, a molecular model is. This is a model of a, a protein alpha helix uh, showing all of the atoms and the hydrogen bonds. We work with models at the atomic level. We also work with models at lower resolution. So this is a model of a virus that was developed in my group. This is the RNA component of an RNA virus, the genome which lies inside uh, the protein capsid. And I'll show you more on this uh, structure in a moment. We work at even lower resolution. To model very large systems, you have to surrender some of the atomic detail. So this is a very, very low resolution model of a piece of DNA. DNA is basically an elastic material. And that, as a matter of fact, this piece of foam has elastic properties that scale very similarly to those of DNA. This is about 1 kb. 1,000 base pairs of DNA. Of course, in this model, what's missing are the electrostatic interactions that uh, are, are very important in the structure of DNA itself. In our computer models, of course, we include those. The last physical model I'm going to show you is a model of the ribosome, which is the, uh, the uh, macromolecular assembly at which uh, protein synthesis takes place. The messenger RNA and tRNAs pass between the two subunits, the large subunit, which catalyzes the formation of the peptide bond, and the small subunit, which is known to examine the fidelity of the interaction between the tRNA and the mRNA. Now, this model shows what we knew about the ribosome in the late 1970s. This was all we had was the shape. Today, because of great advances in experiment, particularly the success of the X-ray crystallographers in crystallizing both the large and the small subunits, and now intact ribosomes. And also because of the contributions of cryoelectron microscopy, we have very detailed pictures of the ribosome. And on my first slide shows the work that we do on the ribosome. On the left is a, a schematic of a kinetic scheme worked out by Marina Rodnina and her colleagues in Germany. And on the right is a picture of the a model of the uh, small subunit of the ribosome. This is done in collaboration with Joachim Frank, now at Columbia University. And the outline of that is the detailed cryo-electron microscopy picture of the small subunit today. And the red and the blue represent the RNA and the protein modeled in all atom detail in that map. And from the very subtle changes in conformation that you see in the cryo-electron microscope, as the ribosome passes from one stage to another in translation, we attempt to infer the details of the structural changes at the atomic level. We also have a large effort on viruses. And this uh, slide shows on the left a, a, a micrograph of a uh, bacteriophage, a virus which infects bacteria. The bacterium is the quarter of a sphere you see on the lower left, and of course, the Bacteriophage itself sits up on the right. Ba on the right-hand picture, you see what a, a bacteriophage is. Basically, a virus is a, a protein coat surrounding a genome, in this case, the DNA, double helical genome, which is stored in the head and then on infection, as you see at the very lower right, is injected into the host cell. We are not studying injection alone. We are also studying the packaging of the DNA into uh, viruses. And on the left, the, four, the three figures on the left, or four, show some of our work on the models for double helical DNA being packaged inside a bacteriophage. We represent these in different ways, depending on what kind of a message we're trying to convey or what type of information we're trying to extract from the models. And then, of course, we quantify them. On the bottom, the the slide shows uh, the force as a function of the fraction of the DNA that is packaged. The red curve is an experiment uh, from Carlos Bustamante's lab at Berkeley. And the black dots represent data from my own laboratory. 
And on the right, you see three images from top to bon bottom, showing a model we have developed for the assembly of RNA viruses. Small RNA viruses, uh, the protein capsid does not assemble until the RNA is present. This is different than the DNA bacteriophage, where the protein core is necessary, or pardon me, protein capsid forms first and the DNA is injected. This model was done in collaboration with Jack Johnson and Annetta Schneeman at the Scripps Institute in California. Uh, and I'm going to finish by showing you a movie uh, that we have developed that shows the packaging process in this particular virus. The image you have on the left now is the final structure, and the movie will demonstrate for you the actual procedure. So uh, I'll just let it run. The DNA double helix, that elastic model I showed you, is represented in our computer models by a chain of beads, the little red balls. Each of those beads represents approximately six base pairs of the DNA. The DNA is injected into a capsid. We're not showing the capsid in the picture here. The DNA is colored red, orange, yellow, and so on. Uh, the first 10 percent, the second 10 percent, and so on as it comes into the capsid. And by examining these movies and by a careful quantitative analysis of them, we're able to infer quite a bit about the packaging process, both the thermodynamics, the kinetics, and the structural aspect. Thank you very much.